Good afternoon. My name is Donnie Belcher, and I am the program director here at the Ann Bancroft Foundation. I am going to be your moderator and co-moderator for this event. You will hear from our co-moderator momentarily. I am going to go ahead and do a quick overview of our housekeeping just to make sure that everyone is on the same page. So we ask that you keep your audio muted. I'm pretty sure we are familiar with virtual events and we wanna make sure that everyone can hear um, when, when everyone's speaking. So um, if you're not speaking, please just keep your audio muted and either myself or Donica, who is our co-moderator, um, will call on you. Please use the chat feature if you have questions. We will be uh, monitoring that throughout the conversation today. And there will be some time at the very end reserved for Q&A. So um, write those questions in the chat feature, which you can access generally at the bottom of the Zoom screen where you control your audio um, and showing your video. There's also a chat button there. And then if you have any follow-up questions, you can always email me at Donnie B at annbancroftfoundation.org. I am also the person who has been communicating with you about this event. And so to give us a formal introduction and welcome, I'm going to turn the floor over to Sarah Finlinson, who is our executive director. Thanks, Donnie. Uh, I am gonna just access a couple of notes that I have here. I want to thank you all for being here um, and welcome to Imagine What's Next <clears throat> Marketing. My name is Sarah Fenlison. I'm the executive director of the Ann Bancroft Foundation. And I know a number of you are new to the Ann Bancroft Foundation, so I want to share our mission statement. Uh, the Ann Bancroft Foundation inspires and encourages girls to imagine something bigger. We strive to build confidence and offer tools that will allow a girl to go after her dreams and feel supported along the way. Through grants, mentorship, and ongoing development opportunities, the Ann Bancroft Foundation is giving Minnesota girls strength to achieve their full potential. This new program is key to delivering on our mission. Our goal is to help girls develop confidence, self-esteem, and resilience so that they can fully engage in their lives and communities. And my message to our girls is this, your strength, courage, and leadership are more important now than ever. We need you to be strong, and we want you to understand and consider all of your options as you map your path forward, both professionally and personally. So this is, uh, the event is the first in a series that provides the opportunity for girls to learn more about career opportunities. Today, we're gonna look at marketing, specifically marketing in an agency environment. Clarity Coverdale Curie, or CCF as they're known, has been a remarkable partner to the Ann Bancroft Foundation. From relaunching our brand to designing our impact reports, the CCF team has helped us clarify our brand, define our audiences, and deliver our message. Their support of and participation in our development as an organization has been truly transformative for us, and most importantly, for the girls we serve across Minnesota. I want to thank Sarah Weiler and all of her colleagues at CCF for organizing this program on the CCF side. I also want to thank our program director, Donnie, for developing the program, it's brand new. And I wanna thank our alumna, we call them trailblazers, Donica Cambrice, for inspiring and co-facilitating this event. I know that between them, you're in good hands. So I welcome you and thank you for being here. It's all yours, Donica. Thank you, Sarah, for the introduction. I am Donica Cambrice. This year I was a programs and operations intern at ABF and then I'm also 2014 Let Me Play grant recipient. Um, I'm really excited to be a co-moderator and I'm really excited for this marketing panel. Thank you to everyone who is here. Now, say thank you. Thank you to Donica. This was actually um, her idea. So while, you know, working with us as an intern this semester, she developed an interest in marketing and had questions and wanted to speak with people who work in the profession and really planted the seeds for this event. So. Thank you to um, our trailblazer, Donica, and we look forward to um, hopefully answering the questions that you have and had 
during the internship as well as um, making this helpful for other girls. Now we will hear, hear from Sarah Weiler, who um, is our partner at CCF. And I have to say um, thank you, um, you know, for helping to make this possible. Yeah, for sure. Hi, everybody. Um, we have a team of about eight of us, seven or eight of us, and we're going to just kind of go over all of the things that we do in the advertising world. We're going to go through a real world example just so you can get a better idea of what it is that each department within an ad agency does and how that comes to life in an advertisement or social media post or radio spot. Um, and I'm gonna, I think, just go ahead and introduce everybody who's on our team. So I am Sarah Weiler. I am group creative director and a copywriter by trade. So I write the ads and concept the ideas. We also have Molly. It's easier, Sarah, can we, there's a screen up now with the photos of all of our panelists. If we can just go in order of appearance, starting with Molly. Sure, hi, I'm Molly Hull. I'm the Director of Brand Development at CCF, and I have worked in advertising for 20 years. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Andy Braun. I'm the media director. I've been at CCF for over seven years and uh, in the industry since 2002. Hi, I'm Jim Landry. I'm the executive creative director at CCF. Um, I've, my career in advertising has spanned over 20 plus years as well. And I've worked at, I don't know, probably six to seven different agencies in Minneapolis. Um, so I have a wide variety of experiences there as well. And I am Scott Denham. I'm Director of Strategic, Strategic Planning at CCF. Uh, I have been in the industry for well over 20 years as well. Um, started out and spent my entire career here. I've worked at agencies big and small across the Twin Cities and with brands big and small and really happy to be here today. Hi, my name is Chrissy Sorensen and I work on the media team. I'm actually relatively new to CCF. I've been here for about three months, but I've worked in the industry for about five years. And I'm Kristen Ostrom. I'm a brand development supervisor at CCF. Um, I've been at CCF for about six years and have worked in various marketing roles um, for probably around 10 years. So happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much for all of those introductions. As you can see, we have a diversity of experiences um, and we're so happy that all of our panelists are here. So we're gonna get right into it. And we wanna start with really helping our uh, guests to understand what working at an advertising agency actually means. And so we're gonna start with um, the Men's Sure campaign. Uh, if you can share First, what is a campaign? Um, some of us may only be familiar with campaigns as it relates to politics. And then second, if you can talk about your role um, in the Mensure campaign. And we can start with Jim. All right, I'm actually gonna share a screen. We have a little presentation for you guys and we're gonna kind of cover off on all those topics that you just talked about, um, hopefully in the next few minutes. So bear with me. Oh, you have to, it says host disabled attendee screen sharing. So you have to allow me to do that, I guess. Taking care of that in one second. Okay, can you share now? Uh, yes. All right. Can everyone see my screen now? Yep. There you go. All right. 
so what we prepared today was um, just kind of a really high level overview of kind of what advertising and marketing really is all about and then quickly showing you how that uh, how we do it at CCF and how it came to life in in a miniature campaign so um, Scott's gonna kind of walk us through this up front yeah so I you know in answering kind of that question what is a campaign what is advertising and marketing um, kind of took a look at it from an outsider's view, which is hard when you've been working in the industry for 20 years. But I, I really think that, um, go ahead and go to the next slide, Jim. A lot of people kind of approach it as, oh, we're, you're trying to get me to buy stuff, trying to get me to take action, think in a certain way, um, maybe go somewhere, promote something. You're just trying to get me to do things. And, and yes, at, at the core of it, that's a lot of what we do. But the reality is, is um, advertising is more about... Jimbo, thank you, <laughs> connecting people and businesses with products and services. And it's that connection point that really makes our, our jobs exciting and interesting. And it goes beyond just like driving people to buy a widget or, or a thing. Um, and we do so, we do it by, thank you, we should have practiced our clicks. Yeah. Um, we do this by uh, developing those right messaging, the, the, the campaigns, the things that you see, the commercials you see, um, the advertising messages you see, and we deliver those at the right time because not everyone is receptive to your message at the right time. And in today's marketing world, which is what has changed so dramatically over the years, is we have total control over when you're seeing that message. And we have a lot of information about you at that given moment so we can deliver the right message at that right moment, which is really impactful. And it ultimately then drives the change and drives action. And that's what marketing, what advertising truly is about. It's, it's about driving change. And um, we talk about it at CCF as um, it, we, that we like to inspire change that matters. Um, and what matters to any individual or any given client or organization could differ, but it could be things like getting you to buy one product over another or changing your perception of something or changing your mind, changing your behavior. Uh, advertising and marketing at its core really is about driving change. Uh, go ahead and go to the next, Jim. So talking about how we kind of approach that at CCF, we have a number of disciplines um, that we, you know, you were just introduced to. Uh, we kind of bucket them in this, these areas. But the reality is, is we all work together. So on the account service side, um, they're managing the client relationship and um, working actively with the client to solve their problems. Um, and, and helping them drive whatever change or whatever action we're trying to do. Um, the strategy team, myself and others, we partner with the account services team to do so, but we're more uh, focused even on the consumers, the individuals we're trying to talk to. We're, we delve deep into consumer insights and understand people's mindset and personality. Uh, it's really kind of like being a psychologist in a lot of respects and understanding, hey, what, in what way can I connect with you as an individual? And that ultimately drives what the creative team does and, and the, the uh, materials, the ads that we produce. And creative and production, when people think of advertising and the advertising agency, I'm sure that's the fun stuff that people think about all the time. And it is fun. Um, uh, and it's uh, the core of a, a lot of what we're doing. But there's a lot of strategy that goes into that. And then finally, we have our media team uh, and analytics. And they're the ones that are delivering that message at that right moment. So that we have so many different channels these days. Uh, to talk to people, um, whether it be online or in traditional channels. And finding that right mix and delivering things at that right moment is really important. And that's what our media team then does. Um, so through all of this then, go ahead, Jim. Um, we, we really come together uh, in this more modern marketing age. All of these components play a, uh, a role in generating that big idea and figuring out how, how we approach a campaign and how we ultimately target individuals. So um, that, that, that's kind of a, the very briefest way to describe um, our roles within CCF and within the traditional advertising agency structure. But all of us come together to um, ultimately drive the change that we're trying to accomplish. So yeah. we, we wanted to talk you through some work that we've done recently to give you an idea of how this kind of manifests itself in the process. And then I'm sure this will lead to a bunch of questions. So, um, you know, when we're done with this, we'll, you know, as we get into the, the Q&A here, um, you know, uh, 
feel free to, to ask any um, individual questions about this. But when it came to Minsure, um, if you don't know what Minsure is, which many of you probably don't have to pay attention to insurance right this second. Um, so Minsure, maybe not, uh, you may not be as aware of them, but Minsure is the state healthcare exchange that allows people who need insurance to go online and shop for any type of insurance that they may need and um, find out if they get covered, if they qualify for credits, to save them money. Um, and, and this is something that came about as a part of healthcare reform a few years ago. So um, go ahead and go into, thank you. And go to the next one, Jim. Well, thanks. So um, the way we work when the uh, client comes to us with a need. So in Minter's case, they came to us with the need of making sure that people are aware that they can participate and that they um, are actively going to minsure.org and enrolling for insurance. Um, this is something that comes up year over year. Um, when a client comes to us with that ask, we start out in this process with a creative brief. And um, the intent of the creative brief is to establish what is the problem we're trying to solve? Uh, who are we trying to talk to and in, in, in trying to drive action from? And then what are we trying to get them to do or what that desired audience belief is? And we try to, as concisely as possible, frame up that information into a creative brief, which you're seeing here. This is the one that we did for Minsure this year. And in Minsure's case, um, you know, the, the act of trying to drive this awareness and drive this action becomes even harder because they're trying to do it with everyone in the state of Minnesota. Traditionally, we like to have a really refined audience and we know who those individuals are and get down into their mindset to help hopefully drive that action. Here we're talking about the entire state and there's a lot of differing opinions and awareness overall. But what we did here in, in this instance is we talked to those Minnesotans across the state to understand um, you know, what their thoughts are uh, about Minsure, what was their awareness level, did they even understand everything that was going on. And we did arrive at a unifying uh, mindset across the state. So no matter who you are, no matter what stage of life you were in, there's a lot of confusion around insurance. Uh, people just don't understand um, all of the different plans. They are scared about making the right choice. They don't even know if they can afford insur insurance. And that kind of unifying message of uncertainty was the thing that ultimately drove our campaign for Minsure this last year. Um, and so when we ro uh, ramped that up into kind of more of a strategic idea, that would ultimately drive and inspire a creative solution to this. Um, we summed it up as that I'm insure, it's the only place you can be insure, be sure you've shopped all plans, received all credits, made the right choice. Um, and that strategic idea is meant to be a, a launch pad for creatives, for the creative team to take this um, and, and uh, concept on what the right idea is. How do I get into this mindset of uncertainty? How do I work to solve that for individuals and, and make it relatable to them so that they would ultimately drive action? So right. Jim, I'll let, let you kind yeah. of roll into uh, it. For how this would come to life for the whole team, we would have this brief, we'd have a whole kickoff meeting, we would bring in creative, we would have strategy, we'd have account, we'd have project management and media, and we would all go over the brief and figure out our next steps from this. Yep. Good note, Sarah. <clears throat> Great, and then what I'm about to show you is what we actually presented to Minsure um, in our presentation part of this um, uh, campaign. So they had not seen any of this, they had not seen the creative brief, or they did see the creative brief, but they didn't see what we, would, what we were proposing to create out of this creative brief. So I'm gonna walk you through what we showed them at a pretty high level. So a lot of times we take that creative brief and we, we create a manifesto to kind of ground our thinking in um, what's the voice of what we're trying to get across. So this, this isn't really um, public facing necessarily, but it just gives, a, gives the client an idea of what, how we're thinking and how we're gonna probably start to talk to the consumer. So some of the Sutton's think Minsure isn't for me, but are you sure? Are you sure you're exploring all the right health insurance options? Are you sure you're getting the right, getting any and all credits or financial help to pay for it? Are you sure you know all the options that are available to you? 
Are you sure you understand how life changes can impact those options? Minsure exists to be sure you do. Be sure with Minsure's side-by-side -side health, health plan comparisons, tailored to your own unique situation. Be sure with financial help that is only available through Minsure. Be even more sure with a free sit-down session with a Minsure navigator or broker. Health insurance is one of the most complicated things there are. So if, there, so if you're ever unsure of anything, be sure with Minsure. So we created this tagline of unsure, be sure, minsure.org. So from there, there's a lot of components um, that were involved in this campaign. What I'm gonna walk you through now is the video uh, portion of this. And these were, this is what we call a storyboard. So these, this is a storyboard of a 15 second spot. So when we create this, I'm, I'm just finding images of what it could be and what it could look like to kind of convey, convey the message. So when you actually see the spot a little later in this presentation, it's gonna look a little bit different from this, but the concept is still kind of the same. So this one, we open on a woman in a, a grocery store. She's holding kind of comparing apples and we hear a voiceover say, some Minnesotans think, and then the, the person on camera looks right at the camera and says, Minsure's not for me. Then the voiceover says, but are you sure? And the person kind of looks kind of unsure and kind of as the voiceover continues, most Minnesotans qualify for financial help through Minsure. Most, most as almost as if the, uh, the voiceover is trying to get the person's attention again. Still sure? And then the person looks and says, uh, no. Then the voiceover continues, when it comes to health insurance, it's better to be sure with Minsure. And then you hear, you see unsure, be sure, minsure.org. So there was a series of these. This one was a, a, a guy in a cafe, similar um, conversation happening with the voiceover. Um, another one of a, a woman searching online for health insurance and kind of the similar and, and, uh, interaction with the voiceover. Then it translated to other things like banner ads, um, Facebook uh, experiences, auto home boards, um, other TV commercials. So just kind of the, the, the broad sense of everything we did in this campaign is kind of shown on this page. But once again, this is still all in kind of concept form. So the client said, yeah, I like what you're doing. I like where the things are going. Of course, there's always little adjustments and stuff along the way that clients make and we adjust and make better. Um, but then we turned it into a real live campaign, and this is what it turned out to be. So I'm going to play video. Hopefully it plays okay, um, but hopefully you'll get a gist of what's going on. You might think, Minsure's not for me. But are you sure? Most people qualify for financial help through Minsure. Most. Most. Still sure? When finding health insurance, it's better to be sure. You might think, Minsure is not for me. But are you sure? Minsure certified brokers and navigators are free for anyone to see if they missed anything. Did you miss anything? I. When finding health insurance, it's better to be sure. Is this playing okay or is this really jittery? Quite okay? It's pretty good. Okay. You might think, Minsure is not for me. But are you sure? Minsure lets anyone compare health plans in one single place versus what you're doing. So, when finding health insurance, it's better to be sure. So, as you can see, we went from storyboard to actual live things. So, that involves um, casting, so getting the actors to, to be on the commercials, finding locations, shooting it, making it basically from start to finish, then editing it, and then getting a voiceover to do it, then mixing it all together. So, there's the production part of that is, is you know, it's fun and exciting as well. So. Um, here's an example of an auto home board that we created. Um, we did a photo shoot where we had, I think, 10 different people that we shot. And once again, it's, it's the whole casting. We, in this case, we found actual real people um, instead of models to do this to make it feel more authentic. Um, as you, on the right-hand side, you can see some more of those people. Um, we brought them all to a studio and shot them there, but this is some examples of banner ad. And then on, on the left here, um, is what we call a Facebook experience ad. So 
it's an ad on Facebook where you actually, if you click into it, it takes you to a deeper experience, almost like a web experience. Um, and people can get more information, um, click on different things, and it takes them to different places and in, in hopes to eventually get them to click, to get them to the Minshare website to enroll. So that's the creative real quickly on the Minshare campaign. Um, Andy, you want to talk about like how, where the stuff lived and where um, people saw this? Yeah, great. Um, so, so really what we're trying to do on the, the media side is, is find those right moments to deliver these messages. Um, one thing you'll also see, and it's, I think it's definitely very apparent with the videos, is quick, concise, bite-sized. Our attention spans just as individuals have shortened exponentially. So to be able to communicate something very quickly um, is no, no short kind of order. So kind of kudos to the creative team for being able to come up with bite-sized placements. And then what we're trying to do as a media team is find what are those right connection channels. That could be Facebook, as you're seeing here. It could be um, online um, using a banner ad. It could be watching Hulu instead of uh, traditional television. What we're trying to do is effectively saturate the entire space where our target audience is. So our target audience are the specific people who would um, be eligible to, to leverage Minsure and hopefully get the financial benefits from it. So we want to be in front of them. We want to deliver um, unique messages um, that cover off on different points because um, really as opposed to this Facebook experience right here where you can pretty much get all the information, you can only get bite-sized pieces of information each time you see our messaging. So this billboard right here can't solve everything, but hopefully it's working um, together and it helps complement the video that you saw or the, the post on Facebook or the newspaper ad that you saw. So we're trying to, again, um, just kind of uh, build build um, uh, awareness and build a message, what we call frequency over time to ensure that the more and more you hear the message, the more and more it resonates. Great. So that's the creative presentation that we have for you. Um, do you want me to stop sharing the screen? Do you have more on your end that you want to share? Um, sure, I can I can share my screen again. And um, as we do that, thank you for that overview. Um, I think it was super helpful to see. I know that we've all been um, the targets of like Facebook experiences and social media experiences. So it's super helpful to see um, how that process starts from the very beginning. Um, and then Donica, I think, will be following up as I share my screen again and put, put the slides back up. Oh. Um, Jim, I think you have to make me host again. And Donica, you can go ahead with the next question while we, while we do that. Okay, so the next question is for Sarah, Chrissy, and Molly. And it is, what from your education has prepared you the most for the work in the marketing field? And then specifically classes from high school and college. So I can say um, as a writer, uh, obviously, it's just straight away, even in elementary school, this is like your language classes, language arts, learning grammar, learning how to structure a sentence properly. So that actually is what where I started because I absolutely loved grammar and I loved writing on a piece of paper and just doing dumb little stories. And that's what triggered me to want to become a writer. Um, later on in high school, it was kind of composition classes and creative writing classes. And then in college, continuing with more composition classes as well as, so I went to University of Minnesota here in town. Um, at the time, they only had one class for copywriting specifically. The rest of my education was more um, kind of, there was a little bit of media dabbling and it was mostly to gear me to be an account person. Um, it is harder to get a creative education uh, and that 
it doesn't nice it doesn't translate in curriculum for most schools uh, so that part is difficult I had to go to a portfolio school to create a book so that I could go show my creative ideas and my creative thinking in ad form and then show that around town and hope to get a job now let next well Christy gets ready um, when Sarah talks about a book that's really the portfolio itself where you have all of your samples of work that you've worked on that you can show to somebody who's interviewing you to show them what you can do. Um, I was actually a public relations major, which was a fairly new major when I went to college. I always thought that if you wanted to work in advertising, that you had to be able to design stuff. And that's one of the things that I always tell people when I visit college campuses or go to my own college, is that it's really hard to figure out what you want to do for a job when you don't even know what jobs exist out in the world. So it was actually fairly late in my college career when I found out that um, that account service, which is what I do, is actually a thing. Um, and you know, the job itself is is kind of being the liaison between clients and the agency. So the different departments of the agency. Um, but the public relations classes that I took were really helpful. Any kind of journalism class was really helpful. Much like Sarah said, there's a lot of writing that pretty much no matter what job you have, you end up doing to some extent because you have to be able to communicate with clients and write emails and have proper grammar and um, a lot of times write memos or share your points of view in writing. So that's a, it, any, any kind of writing chorus is helpful regardless of the career that you choose. And I think a lot of colleges do have some kind of communications major. So the classes that you would run into there would be applicable to the job. Thank you. Um, both that's a great segue because my degree was actually in communications. And I took a lot of general classes related to media studies, journalism, you know, I learned about the history of advertising, um, the impacts of this discipline on our society. I got to study some influential campaigns, kind of work on some, you know, mock campaigns of my own. And that degree really laid a great foundation for understanding the world of marketing. But when I look back, I have to say the most valuable to my actual day-to-day -day job was public speaking. And admittedly, it's kind of rare that I'm, you know, behind a podium giving a speech or even talking on a webinar like I am right now. But at the end of the day, this is a communications industry and being able to kind of share your thoughts, whether it's with a client in a more formal presentation manner or just getting on the same page as your team or your boss or your coworkers, you know, you need to get over that fear that I once had of just talking to people. So for me, it was the public speaking and just, you know, not being afraid of that anymore. Thank you so much, um, everyone who responded to that question. We are monitoring the chat and I wanna remind you, if you have questions to please type it um, in there. And we have a question from Tessa um, that was actually a follow-up to everyone just sharing um, what from your educational background was the most helpful? And the question is, if you're a high school senior interested in a career in marketing, do you need to go into a bachelor's degree program or are there some associates or shorter term programs that you would either recommend or um, maybe CCF has hired from? Anyone can take that. I would say in general, it is an industry with um, four-year degrees, particularly because the maturity of things like writing and the skills that it takes are generally um, all-encompassing of a lot of different liberal arts kind of choruses that you would take. The portfolio school is often an add-on to that four-year degree. I can't say that I've ever hired somebody who didn't have a four-year degree. I'm curious if anyone else on the CCF staff recalls a time yeah. that, that we would have or that you did in, past, in your past career. 
I would think the only exception is the creative department. Um, sometimes designers um, or digital focus f people didn't go a four year degree route, um, but that's really talent based. Um, so we're, when we're looking for those roles, you know, they do need to have a portfolio and they do need to kind of understand the business, but we're really just trying to look for um, talent um, per se there versus a resume or where you went to school. So. Yeah, I'll just add, I feel like in the digital space, there's a little more opportunity there um, just because people are um, growing up more in that space and have that interest and are self-educating themselves um, earlier on. And so we, we didn't go great in great depth. There's a lot of digital things that we do as an agency, build websites, even the banner ads, things like that. It requires HTML knowledge and programming knowledge. And those, those are things that definitely could be learned at a, a trade school or, or in a, a shorter term program that would be applicable. So again, I think it's, it's just having the passion and knowledge like Jim was talking about um, to show that, um, you know, you're ready to be, to be working within the space. Thank you. And then we'll, we have one more question from the chat and then um, I'll throw it over to Donica. Um, the chat question is, uh, does your agency test to make sure that the chosen approach or concept is inoffensive, not tone deaf for certain segments of the target population? And what, and does the agency have any, any interaction with the website development team of the clients? So, you know, um, as you're doing your creative, do you work with the creative department or the, the marketing department of another, of your, of your um, clients? And then, let me make sure I didn't miss anything. And just that whole question around what do you do when your when your campaign doesn't resonate with um, your target population or audience? Well, I'll jump in unless anybody else. I will say, you know, so we, we're always um, trying to ensure that it does resonate. Minsure, for example, um, we are targeting diverse populations across the state. We, in this example, worked with um, community managers on their end, people that are within the community working with certain populations to ensure that um, there wasn't anything tone deaf within the messaging and to ensure that we were addressing any individual needs that a certain population may have. Um, and the, the benefit of our the digital age is we can change that messaging based on what we know of you. So we can ensure that we're delivering those messages to those individuals in the right way. Yeah, and they usually, um, in digital space, they call that A-B testing. You'll do one version that says one thing, and then you'll do another version that says a different thing, and see how it performs. See how many, click, how many clicks you get, and then based on the clicks, you'll learn from there. Um, as far as tone deaf, uh, that's kind of why this is really important that we're doing this, because um, notoriously, advertising is very much white from the white perspective. Um, and it's been something that we've all, at, you know, even when I started, it's like, wait, we need to get more people, more representation so we can get everyone's voice. That's still a need. You know, 20 years later, we still aren't there, slash 100 years later, we still aren't there. Um, so that's something that's very important and something that we, encourage definitely as an, an industry um, and we're hopeful that the shift starts to happen and that being said there's also so many ads if you like there's one ad I think it's for chocolate like for Dove and it's for women I'm sure is the target but you can so tell that a man delivered the message because it's just like it's very sexual and bizarre and the way she's eating the chocolate it's like that's not how i eat chocolate like what are you trying to do so you can tell like probably a guy directed it and you can see those things and that happens it still happens today we all make mistakes and hopefully we learn from them well thank you anybody else want to add to that Okay, um, 
I have to say that um, reminded me of like the Axe commercials. Those are can be kind of weird sometimes, and it's like, okay, who made this? Who is this for? But okay, <laughs> moving on. What is your biggest advice for our trailblazers, our girls interested in marketing, communication studies, and business as a career? And this question is for Kristen, Andy, and Scott. So just your biggest advice for girls interested in marketing, communication studies, or business as a career? Yeah, I can start. This is Andy. Um, my biggest um, thought is, is starting to think about the why behind the what. So what I mean by that is um, looking and even, you know, using your, your acts example, um, starting to think about maybe what would be the strategy or the approach or who is that end user that that company or business is trying to reach to create change. Um, it may not be you. Um, probably the easiest way to start to do that would be to start to think of uh, brands or products or companies um, that you're either interested in or you would uh, assume you would be part of the target and then start to understand, do they, do they get me? Do they understand who I am as a person, not just, um, you know, a, a list of demographics, which would be, you know, male, female, your age, your income, your education level, but who you are as a person? And are they then connecting with you? Do they, do they empathize with you? Do they help you um, understand how their product or service can help um, with what your motivation is? So. I'm um, starting to think about just that strategy so that when you do see a commercial or you drive by a billboard or you turn the page in a magazine and you see an ad um, versus maybe just an immediate visceral reaction, which is certainly part of it, um, you know, what, what is that why behind it? Um, and then in the case of, you know, Sarah's example with the chocolate, you might be able to decipher that, hey, this, this group was just completely tone deaf in their approach and their um, doing more harm than good potentially with their messaging, um, you know, that, you know, hey, maybe I used to love, love Dove chocolate, but because of their approach and their message, um, maybe I'm turned off by it. So that would be my, my biggest advice, just to start to get into the mindset of, of what we do every day. Happen next to kind of piggyback off of what Andy was saying. Um, you know, the with the internet, I mean, everything is right at our fingertips, right? So even if you see campaigns or brands that you think are doing a good job or not doing a great job, you know, you can track down case studies for agencies that have, you know, potentially done the work, or you can learn about kind of the strategic um, oversight or the approach that they were taking and kind of how the work translated. So that certainly is um, a good place to kind of do some reading and understand how campaigns come to be. I think. Um, Secondly, and I probably didn't do enough of this in the beginning of my career, but just networking with people as much as you can. So reaching out, talking with people who work in marketing and advertising. Um, I know I'm certainly really open to having coffees and chats with people who are interested in the industry. And I know that everyone on this call is too. So don't be afraid um, to reach out, even if you're not finished with school or you're not ready for an internship or you don't even really know what you want to do. Um, I think people are, are very open to having those conversations and helping kind of guide people um, through and understanding how agencies are structured and, you know, different types of roles that you could potentially have in an agency one day. So those are probably be my two top things to focus on. Yeah, I'll add to that and just say, um, showing passion, showing passion about the industry and what you're, what we're doing, showing that you have delved in and, and are asking the right questions. I think Advertising in general is notor notoriously hard to get into um, because a lot of agencies are looking for people with experience, but you can't get experience without working at an agency. And the way to stand out in those settings um, is to show that you are passionate about what we do and that you are bringing something to the table yourself. And the ways to keep on top of that really is keep on top of pop culture, keep on top of the trends and things that are changing. Um, the digital space has totally disrupted advertising. And the, the people that are trailblazers right now are the ones that were digitally savvy and coming in and um, you know, a, helping advertising pivot into this new digital space because they just were intrinsically digital. They grew up on that. 
Um, and those are, are roles that can be filled and there's new roles that will be developed in an advertising agency that we don't even have it on the radar yet. Um, but you know, it's because advertising really shifts with the times and is greatly affected by whatever's happening on any given day. So yeah, have some passion. You're on mute, Donnie. Donnie, yep, Donnie, you're muted. I'm just talking. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was speaking with my, my dog who's not too far away. <laughs> um, but what I was saying was that uh, the next question in the chat, and I'm gonna actually encourage people to use the chat to respond to this question. We are gonna be sending out a resource list um, in the next couple of days. So if you are aware of resources for people who are interested in careers and marketing, you can either type it in the chat or if you think of it in the next 24 hours, you can email me. Um, there's a question specifically about professional associations that offer inexpensive student um, memberships. And we have a couple, believe it or not, it's already 450. This was like the fastest 50 minutes of my life or of the week for sure. Um, so we're, we're gonna, we have time for a couple more questions. And the next question is um, professionally, did you always know that you wanted to go into marketing or did you try other careers first? Um, and I'm gonna ask for Andy and Sarah to share some responses here. So I didn't necessarily know that I wanted to go into advertising. I absolutely knew that I loved to write. And then I figured out once I was in college, like, oh, advertising is a thing. I can try and use my writing skills to get into advertising. And so that's really how it started for me. Uh, I was inspired by the TV show, Who's the Boss? Because Angela Bauer worked in advertising and I was like, oh, what's this all about? I wanna know. Um, and I also was like, just, I watched TV when I was a kid and I knew every single jingle. I knew all the ads, like I didn't change the channel when ads came on. So it was always something that I was super excited about. I, I like advertising. And so that's kind of how I got started. Similar to what Molly was saying during her introduction, it came to me later, kind of in my educational career. I went into college thinking I was going to be a math or a science major. That came really easy to me. I took organic chemistry and organic chemistry two and calculus and calculus two and I just hit a complete brick wall and was like this is this is it this is as far as I can go and then I had a lot of um, uh, friends um, in school who were, were studying PR or studying communications and I went to the University of Minnesota and they had just reopened the kind of brand new journalism school. I was like, oh, that's a nicer building than what I've been taking classes at. So I looked at that and then started down the path. And as um, I think Sarah was saying earlier, um, even going into to school for marketing or communications, um, you don't necessarily, and Molly mentioned this too, you don't necessarily know what the jobs are going into it. I had no idea that media was a discipline until I took a class that was taught by a professional in the market about what media and what I do now day to, every day um, was. And that, you know, the, the math background that I had started to come through, some of the psychology stuff that I was interested in but what didn't want to focus on, all, it all kind of came true. So I think, you know, as Scott was saying, you know, be passionate, um, but be curious too, and have an open mind. Um, but then also don't be afraid to, to pivot in terms of what you're doing. Um, the nice thing about our industry is that we work with a lot of different industries. So if you're passionate or curious about certain, um, you know, whether it's healthcare or um, financial services or consumer packaged goods, you can, you can get very focused and you can segue an interest that you might have into the communication side of the business. Super helpful, thank you both. And our final question is gonna come from Donica. Okay, so for the final question, I wanna ask what's the most challenging aspect about your job and working for CCF? Oh, and I'm sorry, this question is for Chrissy and Jim. 
Yeah, I would say the biggest challenge is that advertising is a very fast paced industry. So, you know, it can be hard to keep up with the constant change, whether that's new technologies, new social channels, just new ways that people consume media. On top of that, you have your clients, their priorities are shifting. Maybe they have budget cuts, maybe they have store closures, maybe they want to change their messaging based on, you know, current events that are happening in the world. So, you know, every day I come into the office thinking I have my ducks in a row and thinking I know my to-do list and priority order, and by 10 a.m. it's completely out the window. So I think just, you know, reacting to the constant change is difficult, but it's also very exciting and personally I think more fun than doing the same exact thing day in and day out. Yeah, to piggyback on what Chrissy just said, I mean, yeah, it's a rapidly changing environment um, from a creative standpoint. Um, it's it's every day. Every single day is different. You cannot plan your day. Um, that makes it exciting, but it also makes it very challenging. Um, also, from a creative standpoint, I think a big challenge we have every day is, you know, we're creating stuff from scratch a lot of the times. You know, we have a blank page in front of us. There's an assignment. There's a creative brief that, you know, that Scott and the team does a great job creating. Um, but now it's our turn then to make something of that and hopefully make something great that not only is creatively interesting, that piques people's interest, but also delivers that right message that the client is looking for. Because ultimately, uh, creative is only as good as it works. I mean, it, you know, it can be a really creative spot, but if it's not connecting the dots and not making people change or do something, then it's, it's kind of worthless. So that challenge of making sure it's great creatively and also delivering the right message. Thank you so much, um, everyone, for sharing, so courageously sharing um, what is difficult about your job. And we're now going to transition into um, thank you. Thank you, CCF, for all of the many ways that you support um, ABF, including showing up today um, to share your, your expertise and your experiences um, with our community. We really appreciate it. Thank you to the ABF team, Sarah, Jenny, who is um, so graciously collecting all of the resources that are being shared so that we can send it in the follow-up. Um, so you don't have to worry about trying to copy and paste everything that, that everyone's sharing. We will be sharing that with you um, later. Thank you to Rupa, who is our in-house marketing person. Um, we, we so appreciate you, Rupa. Um, so, and, and just thank the team for showing up. And then thank you to Sarah from CCF for spearheading this partnership. Um, we hope that this will not be the last time um, that we collaborate. In the chat box, you will find a link to our evaluation survey. This was our first event um, of, uh, this was our first time hosting this event. And we really appreciate your feedback. Um, shouldn't take long for you to complete that. So just click that link in the chat. Um, we also encourage you as we talk about inspiring change to follow ABF on all of our social channels. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as LinkedIn. And we have a YouTube page. And the messages that we share on all of those platforms are different. Um, we share resources, we share inspirational messaging. So if you're not already, please follow us and we'll include those links in the follow-up. And then lastly, please tell someone that you know about the Ann Bancroft Foundation. Let them know that we give out grants to girls to support their dreams. Let them know that we are hosting programming like this um, throughout the summer and beyond to support um, and provide resources to girls. And if you are interested in you know, volunteering with us, supporting us in any way, our annual celebration is coming up on June 18th. It is called Voices and it will be held starting at 6.30 with um, a cocktail hour. And so if you are free or if you wanna know a little bit more about what we do here at ABF, it is free to attend and it's June 18th. Um, you can go on our website and bancroftfoundation.org um, to register. And I will also include that in the follow-up. We have about three minutes left. So does anyone have 
um, anything else. And I know people are taking the evaluation. So if you're doing that, thank you. We need that. Um, but if anyone has any um, parting words or anything else they want to share, we have a, a couple of minutes for that. I'll throw in one more round of thank you. Um, I've worked now with you on a number of projects and I still learn more about how you all work together. It is, it, it to all appearances, it's a seamless effort um, and that's quite remarkable. So thank you. And then a third thank you. <laughs> I was taking notes while you guys were giving um, your answers. So thank you so much. That was incredibly helpful for me. I'm really interested in marketing. So this was a great opportunity for me to learn from you guys. And thank you for the resources. I'm definitely gonna check those out too. And thank you, Donica, for the idea. Thank you for you know sharing the idea with us. Um, her internship has officially come to an end, much to our sadness, but um, Donica is very much still involved and this event would not have happened were it not for you planting the seed. So thank you. And with that being said, I'm going to tell everyone to have a great evening. Um, we appreciate you. We hope you learned something valuable and we will talk to you soon. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.